Hello everyone, welcome to the 11th video to beginner's guide on how to Revit. Now, since we are already in 3D view, let's go right ahead and explore that. I know we've been using 3D view in the previous video, but that doesn't mean we know everything about it. All we've done is actually just revolving around it, zooming in and out and selecting some elements. Okay, so let's do our best to explore the full potential of 3D view in Revit for now. Let's close ground floor, zoom extend, center it properly. As usual, we'll head to PP right here, I'm sorry. I mean properties palette, <laughs> PP. Anyway, uh, extent area, which is right here. Then we'll take on section box. Now, you see that box right there? That's the section box, okay? So. That is now almost very similar to the crop view in plan or the far offset clip in section. It's a box where we can actually control its dimension like so. There you go. Let's make it a wee bit smaller. Okay. Now, while controlling the limits of the section box, if you cut through your element like this, it will allow you to see further into it like so here as well. Now, to pan around like this, you just press your middle mouse button and to pivot around your model like so, you will be pressing your shift and middle mouse button holding it at the same time. Also, zoom extend or zoom to fit works here the same like clicking your middle mouse button twice or ZX. Like that, okay. Then here in the view control bar, you can actually turn off and on the shadow mode or was it again? I think it's this one. Nah, this one. Now, oops, wait, let's make our model a bit bigger first. Okay, now the, the toggle shadow actually works in all the graphic display except the hidden line, which is this one. I'm sorry, it works in all the graphic display option except the wireframe like this. Apart from that, it works on everything. So let's try hidden line. Let's see. Shaded. Consistent. And lastly, realistic. Looks better, right? Okay. Next is this button right here. Save orientation and lock view. What it does is it locks the current view in place using it for documentation purposes and we can put a name on it like view mm, 3d view one once it's been locked you see here the name change and well you cannot pivot it around like we did before so if you want to be able to do it again you either unlock it there we go or let's lock it again click this button again right here to open another another 3D view, which is this one, and this is the locked one. Or we can go here, right click, duplicate view, then duplicate. It's this one. But of course, since it's a duplicate of the locked one, it's still locked, so we, we're gonna have to unlock that. But look at that, we, we missed something. If you right click again, duplicate view, there's something here called duplicate with detailing. What's that? That's the annotation. Let's do one sample. So if I were to put a, you can actually put a dimension in 3D view. Here, four, eight, oops. Again, it was clicking the tile of the brick. Four, eight, one, two. And if we're to go to ground floor, it should show the same dimension from this part to here oh again i click it by mistake so one more time there we go 4812 so that's what it does so that's a detail where was it again this one okay so that's a detail so if i were to go here right click duplicate view with no detail the annotation is gone so let's close this one now, if I were to go to right click, duplicate, oops, what's his name? Uh, let's delete everything. There's too much copies now. So, 
sorry, let's start from the beginning. So we're gonna do the dimension from this wall to this wall for 812. This is an annotation dimension line. If I were to right click this duplicate view and detailing, it should show as well. There we go. Now, if I duplicate this with no detailing, that annotation will not appear. All right, so that's it. Let's delete the others. Let's go back to this one. Let's make this shaded. There. Now, let's move on to the last part, which is this. This here is called the view cube. View cube. It's a representation of your model. You can also pivot around it like you would before. See? See that pivot bar in the middle? We can also control it using the view, view cube. Clicking this house icon will go back to the generic or default perspective. Like this one. So if I were to zoom in and play around like this, if I wanted to go back to the generic view, or sorry, the default view, if I click this, it should do like that. Okay. Now, if you right click the view cube, it should show plenty of other options. So, first is, well, go home, which is similar to this one. If you click it, save view. If you click this one, it's actually similar to the lock view, except, well, it just doesn't lock it. An example. So, 3D Ortho 1. And here, it made a new view, and if we go to it, it's actually the same thing, but well, unlike the first one, it doesn't lock. So that's how simple it is, so we don't need this. Let's delete this one. Okay, moving on. Next is these two options right here. Now, these two options are what's called a projection. These two viewpoints are for preference. There's no way to say which is better, but in my line of work, we always use orthographic. Why? The ortho viewpoint makes it so much easier to compare two parts of an element since they all appear in the same scale, like this wall, right? Like this wall and this wall. As you see, no matter what I do, they all look the same, right? If they're in the same scale, so, okay, so um, unlike in perspective, whichever is far away would seem far and those close would be seen as near, so they give us more information about depth, like here an example. As you see, this looks very near and it's a, it, it looks weird, unlike this one. Since it, it's far, it looks a bit smaller, so that's the difference between perspective and orthographic. So if I zoom out, look at here. If you pivot around here like this, you can see that the furthest one is a little bit longer. Now, if I were to go back to orthographic, see that? That's the difference. So you may use whatever you want. And of course, it depends on your manager or the project requirement. Also, if I were to add something, perspective is actually what our eyes see. We don't see orthographic. So, in short, ortho is digital while as perspective is in real life. So, that's how we can differentiate these two perspectives. Sorry, these two projections. Next is set current view as home. Remember this button right here? So, let's make this current view like this is the home. Now, if I were to zoom out like this and I click this home, it should go back right here. See that? Okay, so let's make something like this as our home. Set card view as home. Next one is send front to view. This is actually simple but hard to explain at the same time. So now, if we have four elevations, north, south, east, west. If you click the view cube, there's some front, right, back, and left. Now, if I were to send front view to north or let's say south, the orientation of the view cube will change. Oops, wrong one. There we go. See that? From left, it changes. So it's now telling us that the north is different as per the view cube. So 
this will be the north now due to the changes that we made now let's put it back to the region to the way it was reset okay so now this is the true north next is show compass well the show the at the bottom of the view cube there's a circle that's the compass so this option just allows us to cut to toggle it off on like so next is orient to view what this does is if you click this option the view cube will just go to the to the to the peak elevation like so this view is actually very different from what we have in elevation so i think this is let's do it again east now if i were to go to east here see the difference here, well, I can't control the 3D view, it will stay as is, and the annotations will be like that. So this is a section view. While as if I go here, I can go, I can control it back to the way it was. So this right click elevation is actually similar to clicking the view cube here. Now, like like so. There's actually this option right here. To begin with okay next one orient to floor plan if you see here we have two plan the first the first floor and the ground floor which is here so if you go to ground floor from the plan this is what we see now we will do the same in 3d there the section box is immediately cut out for us. So if we had a very long wall, let's say an example, let's extend this wall. Let's make it unconnected and let's make it 10,000. One, two, three. Okay, now this wall has went past the second floor, sorry, went past the first floor. Now, if I were to orient this to first floor, We can no longer see our ground. Why? Because the ground floor is past the first floor, like here, as seen here. Everything immediately cuts out for us. Now, if I were to place it back to ground floor, it will cut out. It uh, the section box will be automatically cut for us. There. So, those are the examples and the full potential of the 3D view. There's actually more oriental direction but these are pretty much same as the other one but anyway let's give it a try there you go oriental direction is these parts right here in the corner of the cube you can actually click it it gives us a direction from the corners so that's it cool huh okay so continuing to the last one which is the options right click options now this option here, we can actually visit this through, cancel this one, file, options, and view cube. It's the same thing. Now, let's explain this one. If I were to untick this, this view cube will disappear. Let's show it. Okay. But it's still here. So, it doesn't really make sense. But anyway, so let's go back. Next is the on-screen position so obviously it's in top right we can control where it, where we want to place it next is the view size so it is automatic so you can just change its size it's self-explanatory next is inactive opacity opacity means it's transparency so if we make this 75 percent well there's not much difference and it's already inactive let's make it 100 Okay. There isn't really that much of a change. Wow. I don't see the difference. I don't see the difference from 0% to 100%. Oh, wow. Okay. There it is. I've had it in the opposite. Anyway, okay. So let's check the others. 
Well, I guess that's it. Nothing else seems here to be worth explaining. And that's it. I guess we're done. So that's the full potential or rather the power of 3D view in Revit. Now let's fix our section box for now. Oh, wow. You know what? Let's just do undo multiple times. Undo until we reach the shadows point. Wow. You know what? Let's use this one. This is so much easier. Alright, I guess that's it. So, this tutorial is done for now. So, for more questions and suggestions, please do comment below. And, if you enjoyed this or find this tutorial very helpful, you can support me by liking and subscribing. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much, guys.